Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazad of Chess channel and welcome to a really really spectacular gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish by the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine Minic in the amazing Martinez variation of the Rui Lopez. So we'll see again a beautiful close Rui Lopez game but nothing will be really really close about this game because in one particular moment the position will explode. The position will be so dynamic with really some cool tactics in my opinion really cool game but again Really, really instructive game here played by Stockfish 16 in one of the most open, often played openings in the Rui Lopez. So, let's see now what happened uh, with the white pieces. Stockfish opened with the move E4. Minix's response was E5. After a couple more moves, we reached the uh, Murphy defense. And after a couple more moves with the move Bishop to E7, we're now in the closed Rui Lopez. Stockfish continues with the normal D3 move. We have now the move D6, fixing also the structure in the center. And now the move C3. The preparation is, of course, obvious. Break and enter with the move D4. Calcic Rook to e1, supporting the pawn on the e4, and preparing now the move d4. Here, Minik plays bishop to g4, pins now the knight on f3. Uh, it's not allowing, of course, immediately the move d4 by the fish. Stockfish uh, kicks away the bishop, and the bishop drops back to h5. Now we have knight to d2. This is a very important move here by Stockfish, connecting now both of these knights, but also uh, this is a beautiful way how to get out of this pin without further messing up the pawn structure with the move g4, because in one moment, we can reroute the knight to f1 and then uh, play knight to g3, simply uh, kicking away the bishop from this active square on h5. We have b5 by Minik, counterplay on the queen side, bishop to b3, knight to a4, and now the stockfish engine drops back with the bishop to c2. The bishop is again supporting further the e4 square. Again, uh, this move d4 is suddenly possible now from white's perspective. That's why Minik stops it further, uh, blocks out now the position around the square d4, knight to f1. Now comes this idea to kick away the bishop from h5. Knight to d7, and now an interesting choice by the fish, g4. A risky, risky idea to um, simply weaken the pawn structure like this in front of your own king, but Stockfish has, I think, here a really cool idea in mind, wants simply to occupy the weak f5 square. From this point on, I think, strategically, white has more spaces, white has, I think, progressive ideas here on the king side. On the other hand, uh, I think black should search for opportunities, maybe somewhere here, somewhere on the queen side. We have knight to c6 by Minik. We have queen to e2, rook to c8, bishop to d2, finishing the development, connecting now both of these rooks on the first rank. Very, very uh, solid play so far by to, uh, both of these engines. Knight to b6, controlling the c4 square further here by Minik, rook to d1, hitting the queen indirectly, of course, but if something uh, gets cleared on the d-file, the queen could be endangered here from black's perspective. Rook to e8, king to h1. Beautiful move here by the fish. Here, Stockfish is announcing very, very really an epic and brutal wild game. Stockfish clears now the G file for the rook, is hoping to get an activity against also the rook on uh, against the king on g8. We have d5 by Minik, rook to g1, knight to a4, hitting the pawn on b2. Uh, Stockfish protects it, of course, and after move d4 that um, uh, here Minik played. Stockfish plays, I think, the first crucial. I think strategic move in the game, maybe just for fun, if you want to practice some middle games, pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for white. What would you do now in this particular position? What's now uh, the best continuation here for white? Okay. The best idea here is to create a static position on the queen side by playing the move bishop takes a4. Okay, you may think it's maybe risky to give up the bishop pair in an early state of the game, but when we think about it harder, the bishop here uh, is always blocked out by its own pawn structure, so the bishop had, I think, a def defensive role, defensive function to protect the structure d3, e4. Now the bishop is basically useful, useless because uh, the pawn structure gets more and more blocked out in the center of the board. We see now uh, here the um, e5 d4 structure and the d3 e4 structure is creating a compact position in the center of the board. So the position is really, really blocked out. So that's why the bishops are not so important, I think, in blocked out pawn structure. So that's why bishop to a4, b takes a4, and now c4 creates a glue together, a really compact position all over the board for the fish. Stockfish has now good spaces in the center is controlling the b2 square and has now uh, still the opportunity to occupy the main weakness in black's camp the weak uh, weak square on f5 
queen to d7 now comes this idea knight to f5 f6 by minik trying maybe bishop to f7 and then kick away the knight maybe with the move g6 stock which continues with a beautiful move rook to g2 and uh, knight to d8 and now rook from d to g1 preparing also to get this other rook uh, now on the h file so stockfish wants now control both of this potentially i would say open files the open uh, potentially open g and h file very very spectacular way to play now with the rooks we have knight to e6 h4 by the fish a rook from a to d8 for instance if you try bishop to f5 this wouldn't be good, uh, so good because after uh, g takes f5 the knight is attacked and then you lose the tactical battle here on the g file this is not working so that's why after move h4 gr good progressive move again by the fish here on the king side we have rook from e to d8 and now rook to h2 as promised look at this Stockfish suddenly built really a brutal, brutal and spectacular attacking formation on the king side. Although Stockfish, by pushing the pawns, also weakened its own king, but uh, this is the way to go. The rooks are really, really protecting uh, the king in a good way and are creating now really some madness on both of this, as I said, potentially open files. We have bishop to f7 by Minik, and Stockfish continues with h5. This is the way to go. What should black do? Uh, for instance, if you try knight to f4 here, this wasn't played in the game, but I was curious, maybe this was the way to go to uh, uh, stop a little bit, at least, the white's progress on the king side. Then, obviously, bishop to f4, e takes f4, and g5 is causing, I think, very, very many positional problems in black's camp, because after f take g5, knight to g5, you can maybe trade off more pieces, but I'm not seeing good ways how are going to defend anymore the g-file uh, this rook is very active in some ways uh, the queen could be also included into the game in my opinion not a good continuation anymore uh, here for black so that's why after move h5 h6 played by minix uh, minix stops the potential progress here around the score g5 but now comes another beautiful move here again by the stockfish engine maybe just for fun again pause the video and try to see now the best idea here for white i'm not saying this is completely busted for black but this move has to be played now by stockfish and stockfish of course saw that immediately played very very beautiful move what would you do now in this position okay stockfish plays here amazing bishop takes h6 this is the way you go sacks the bishop here against the black pawn structure black of course somehow blocked out the g5 score but created many many weaknesses in front of its own king here after move g takes h6 now the knight comes in a beautiful way into the game and the problem here for minik is that minik has to step back here to f8 minik doesn't have time to secure the king on this side of the board uh, because for instance if you try king to h7 obviously you lose the bishop on f7 if you get uh, king to g7 if you're trying to stay connected to the bishop in this way then this one is winning the game look at this g5 this is now the way to go for instance after something like knight to g5 knight takes f7 would be now white's move you cannot uh, pick up the knight of course with your knight you have to play king takes f7 but now rook takes g5 comes in a beautiful way into the game look at this after g5 and now knight to e5 uh lead into this royal fork position this is game over here for black really really spectacular tactic here after move knight to h6 so see king to g7 is not possible because the king gets decoyed in some ways to the square f7 and then there are some forks here around the square e5 so that's why king to f8 stockfish continues now with the move g5 this is the way to go if you play here after g5 then again this one knight to e5 with similar tactics of course uh, now the bishop is twice attacked so again a messed up game uh, here for for black after move g5 we have here now uh knight to f4 by minik stockfish drops back to d1 and now bishop to e6 at least holding the position for a while again i'm pointing out f take g5 it's not possible because of this particular tactic so after move queen to d1 we have bishop to e6 stockfish continues now with the move g6 by sacrificing the bishop for uh two points on stockfish created now also a very important strategic element two connected passers on the g and h file so now the pawns are rolling and in, in the cool part about this pawns is of course uh, that the pawns are supported by the rooks which is really really crazy great great uh here strategic but also of course tactical play here by stockfish 16 so king to g7 here minik is trying to block out the position at least for a while tries to hold the position with the king uh, hiding of course behind the enemy's pawns hiding behind uh, stockfish pawns but now stockfish continues the pressure 
with knight to f7. This is a beautiful, beautiful move. For instance, bishop takes f7 would not be so good because here h6 would be then the best continuation here for white. Not to take out the bishop immediately. This wasn't played in the game, but uh, I wanted to show really, really how brutal this attack here by Stockfish is. You could maybe try to escape to f8, but now the pawns are rolling and now with h7 you can get even checkmated in some lines. Look at this, with two pawns supported by both of these rooks. If you step back here to h8, then uh, here we simply pick up the piece. You can maybe hold this position with queen to e6, but now the rook is coming. You may be trying to trade off the finally the rooks here around the square f7 you're trying to get rid of this pawn but now the knight is coming into the um, into the game you can maybe take it out but now knight to f5 look at this you're trying this one and now after queen to g4 this is very very messed up game rook to g8 in some lines is a threat you cannot take because this file is going to get be open for for the rook so although down the piece here white is simply destroying black's position all over the board very very wild stuff so here after knight to f7 uh, that was played by uh, Stockfish. That's why Minik tried to get a new defender into the game. But Stockfish continues now with a beautiful h6. This is the way they go. If you play here, rook takes h6. This wasn't again played in the game. Then rook takes h6 is winning again after bishop to f7. And now we have this one, rook to h7. And now we pick up the piece again with some with some tactics as we saw before. Knight to h4 and then knight to, knight to f5 is simply too much to handle. Uh, here for black. After move knight to f7, as we said, rook to h8, h6, st uh, here Minik retreated to g8, and Stockfish continues now again with this beautiful move, knight to h4, uh, here Minik tried bishop to f7, but now after h7, uh, again we have a beautiful, beautiful position where the king is simply surrounded by the pawns, supported by the rook's activity. What should you do? For instance, if you try rook to h7, uh, then g takes h7, um, king to h8, knight to f5, is again i think a messed up position the queen is coming into the game there's simply too much pressure here uh, this is game over again for black so after move h7 minik tried king to g7 but now the knight comes in a spectacular way into the game knight to f5 and in this position the minik chess engine resign you have to now give up the queen uh, black lost uh too much material this is not working uh, the king is naked here so maybe you can just play a little bit more but uh, this is game over here for sure so brutal brutal attack here by the fish in the beginning this was uh, the opening move um, that split the position split the uh, defense of black bishop to h6 followed with knight takes h6 really really well stuff now g5 uh, really really a beautiful sharp attack here by Stockfish 16 and seemingly I would say um, a static position in the seemingly positional setup uh, in this Martinez variation of Dorio Lopez you see how Stockfish found really cool ideas to attack uh, Black's camp really really one of the most beautiful Rui Lopez chess games that I've seen in my life. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think there's something here for you. I think you can apply maybe some of the strategic uh, tactical ideas here that we saw by Stoffer 16. If you want to see more epic and brutal, sharp tactical games like this, check out our Comment to chess games played by computers. Uh, here's the link of our playlist. And um, if you like this content, hit the subscribe button. What do we say at the end? Chess is the best, of course.